Hi, I'm Christopher Dahl, and welcome to my very first streaming video. Now, you'll notice the sound is a little bit off. My apologies for that. There's not much I could do. The background music was pretty loud, so hopefully it won't get too washed out. But this is my first attempt at any kind of a live stream, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. Cheers. Oh, I got to see my bad brush stroke techniques. And this is going to be okay. I'm just going to. Oh, that thing's huge. Oh, hello. All right. Ah, and then minor hairs. Yes, we share our house with cats. One of those. And of course, it means that they always end up with bits of hair everywhere, but little bastards. No, nah, we love the little bastards. That's perfectly fine. Ba -dum -bum -bum. So really, there's just kind of no magic here. I just want to get these these pieces in. I'm probably being way too delicate for it already. Oops. One thing about this paint, it has a tendency to dry really fast on the palette, which is pretty funny. Um, you can end up with little hunks of small brush with this. You can have a little little hunks of paint you never use. I probably try not to put too much out at any given time, but it never seems to fail. It it air dries very quickly. Which is great if you're doing illustrations. Because it won't be long before you're actually able to roll with the next color layer. But uh yeah don't put any more out at any given point in time than you really need. My recommendation. Let's see here. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna fill that whole thing in. I'll get some details in later. The nice thing about casein is that it's an opaque, mostly opaque paint. Some colors, of course, are more opaque than others. Some require a little mixing with white. But if you go over dark with a lighter color. It will absolutely, you'll absolutely love it. That's something you want to do so much with an acrylic. This acrylic's inherently transparent. Detail on this little guy. It's this spaceship's little brother in the background here. Not going to go too crazy on this since the detail on this one's going to be so much further out. And I wanted to know yeah, basically where it is. Get the Get the basic pieces in. Alrighty. I'm just gonna go ahead and start in with a nice wet layer of yellow. Yeah, what I said about it, casein being opaque. Well, most colors are. Yellows, as typical with most other paints, is probably the least opaque. That's nice. It's gonna give me a nice very bright color without so much covering my lines, but once I get the red in there, I'm going to start getting some of the pale red in, which is going to do some on-page on mixing with the yellow. And this is just to get some color down. It's not going to look great at first. I just want to kind of get my tones, get my zones in here. Going a little thicker here with the paint, and as you can see, it's kind of getting some nice, nice effects. It's not looking so, so thin in watercolor. It's going to leave that middle zone as yellow as possible for right now. While I kind of get this worked in, kind of going to just show you how you can you can kind of watercolor this, which is a little shame to do with, with cobalt blue because it's such a beautiful paint, but. Uh, in theory, you could just take this casein and do entire watercolor. 
if you're familiar with that with what the watercolor process and as you can see here I'm not being too careful I'm just want to get the tone get the blue tone down I'm even gonna go over the ship a little bit I just want to get rid of the white of the page so I still have some of this darker Haynes Gray and Ultramarine, and I know I want to go darker on this side. I'm going to go ahead and just get that in there. This is kind of a, going to help me frame in the ship a bit. Unfortunately, cobalt blue is a little bit of a transparent color as well, but it does really nicely. It's one of my favorite of the blues. It's going a little darker than I thought, but I think once this dries, Wait is dark. I got into that space there. Okay, I see it. Yep, there we go. That's okay. Won't be the first time that's happened for me. Won't be the last. Now, we're not quite to the point where we're getting into those sweet John Berkey style lights. We just want to get the... Uh, I want to get the forms in there. I'm just struggling here for a moment with the paint. Kind of just taking the time to work between a little too wet and not enough so a constant battle there there's a couple of ways you can approach doing a drawing like this and I probably should have done more of a layup of washes and tones but that's okay we're gonna have fun with it either way And I'm just going to try to bring back some of these uh, some of these details that I, I lost by getting the colors over it. I mean, at this point, I've pretty much lost that underdrawing. So, hey, mistake number two. That's all right. It's our painting. We can do with it what we want. So even though I lost my details from before, I'm going to basically use this paintbrush in the black a little bit like a like a pen and just kind of redraw them in. I remembered kind of what I was doing, so we're just going to have fun with it. And this will help us redefine some of the pieces. Dancing, I'm dancing my brush here a little bit just to kind of get it to right where I want it to be. At this point, I kind of almost want it to be like an ink brush. Although the goal here isn't necessarily to outline as much because that would take all the fun out of it.
And again, thank you all for joining me on this tonight. This is going to be, uh, this is fun. I, uh, was incredibly nervous about whether or not I really wanted to do this, but I was encouraged by some other fellow artists who've gone down this route, and I bought the equipment, the cameras, at least one of the cameras anyway, about six months ago to give this a shot. And just things got out of hand, life was just moving too many directions at once, I just didn't sell down to put it all together. So I felt like, okay, now's the time. I think I got a piece that was just a little out of perspective there. So now I'm using some of this violet to sort of build up the build up the forms a bit, kind of rendering as I go. I know that these will eventually be darker areas, so I'm kind of trying to use it as a wash without completely covering shadow zones. And uh, I probably need to do the same. But hey, appreciate you stopping by, Greg. This is great seeing a familiar face. And I appreciate the support. Kind of envisioning these side wings to be platforms with all sorts of instrumentation on them. It's rare. <laughs> they do children's parties. Wait, that's a Bill Hicks line. the ship itself is concerned, I, I like to think of these as explore. This particular one is sort of an explorer of some sort, but it's big. It's got a lot of people in it. Um, bigger than a yacht. Maybe cruise ship size, but it's not just for the pleasure of extremely rich people. I like to envision these things as being exploratory craft out doing the good deed of finding other things in space. Enforcing the rule of law with a mighty hand and powered weapons. Now since I've got such a blue-purple tone going with this, with this shape so far, any addition of these orange colors, and I'm using a, um, a yellow ochre, which is kind of a of a muddy yellow, not so bright as a regular yellow. It 
uh, it really works with the eyes to start setting things off and making it a little bit less flat. I just like to be judicious with it. I wanted to get some more detail in here, but I didn't want it to be warm colored, so I'm kind of bringing in my violets. At this point, I am just making up details on this thing, um, letting the brush kind of do its own thing. This is where I kind of trance out and just zen the shit out of it, see where it goes. Whoops. Apparently sometimes it goes badly. I was thinking that this back end would have all sorts of little instruments on the top of it. Um, just antenna and little scientific measurements, who knows, giant lasers. So I like to add little bits of that. Okay, now where was I? Oh, yes. Yes. Here we go. I said this is a uh, this is definitely where it starts to get fun for me where there's already some color and some form in place lines, these start picking up the detail that I originally drew and then painted over to bring this thing alive. Although I don't want to get ahead of myself too much here. There's a few places that I'd like to, before I go too far with this, I'd like to kind of step back.
I keep turning this at odd angles because I'm kind of sitting really close to one of my desks and to get over here either I have to reach over it or just turn the whole thing which is perfectly fine I'm happy to do that as well turning it seems to work out the best jutting out of the sides of my ships. I think it kind of adds a sense of scale. Maybe I'm just a little too influenced by movies like Alien, where the Nostromo had just all sorts of crazy things jetting out of the front and sides. In their case, it was just piles of model kit part was not attached, thank god. get some action in this. There we go. Well, I like the green ones, but I also like taking a little bit of yellow and just stretching that out so it's got like a nice, there we go, nice little Nice little pull there, so it's not just all one color. Gives it a bit of a gradient. Red, of course, needs some hits. The yellow hit it. There we go. Here. There we go. Gonna give it some life. Add some, add some character.
these little bits of detail really kind of bring out the life of a ship like this. You have its little passengers, a place to live. Get some indications of running lights out there. the fun part for me. This is where you sort of jazz hands the whole thing and it really starts taking on a different tone and I don't know where my mind goes when this part comes up because this is totally different. markings help define some of the shape. I think they kind of also give it a little added dimension, maybe making it just a touch more real. just going to kind of brighten up what I can. Building up an extra layer of white. I've gone over some of these already, but it, it'll help punch the ship out, the main ship away from the background a bit more.
this white's a little muddy. And that's actually going to work in my favor. Ah, that was probably a mistake. Can I get rid of it? I can get rid of it. There we go. Got too much on that brush. It's quite all right, though. This area here, because I'm kind of seeing some stuff. Seeing some stuff I didn't like. lines. Oops, sorry about that. I killed the camera. I killed the camera with my brush. Yeah, sorry for zoning out there a little bit, but when I get into the detailing on these ships, it kind of, my brain goes into a different place. So, yeah. I try to stay a little more animated with that. Okay. That's kind of what this needed. There was this harsh blue that was just bugging me. And I kind of forgot to come in. Oops. We upsed it again. standard flick method. Now to do this, I don't want to get them on the ship, so I'm going to cover my ship up a bit and throw some on. These are the small background stars. Yeah, they were a little smaller than I was hoping for, but that's okay. I'll add a few by hand. Let me do a few large ones. Probably should be a little bit more blue. stars in here so maybe I will just add a few white ones and then I'll blue this up blue it up yes exactly thanks even by just adding a few dots like this it's surprising how far it goes to giving your painting a finished feel space painting. I will 
I'll probably not go all the way till 10 o'clock because I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm not much more I want to do on this one. But the stars are certainly something I wanted to uh, wanted to add. great traditions of Bob Ross himself. I'm going to do the, I'm going to peel off my edge tape, see where we're at here. to call this the space painting of the night. And uh, I will be posting this on my own personal website. Thank you. Uh, go ahead and check that out. It's Christopher-Doll.com. There's a link in the, uh, in the info under the video here. Um, I'm posting things on Patreon if you're so inclined. Not only the space paintings, but uh, uh, the comic strip that I'm working on. Breaking Fitz Law. Um, and uh, of course, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, which this will probably go to all of the above. But I appreciate everybody sticking around tonight, and uh, thanks for coming by. I'm, uh, I'm Christopher Dahl, Blackbird CD, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off with my uh, starting uh, video because I don't have my ending video yet. So. Uh, but actually, I do have an ending video. I take that back. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, you, everybody have a great evening. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Also, catch my weekly stream over on Twitch every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thank you.